Hey everyone, I'm Danny. Welcome to Danny's Tech Channel. In case you didn't know, I'm not just into building PCs. Cars are another hobby of mine. And today, I'm going to be turning to my love of cars for inspiration with this build. I'm going to be transforming this 10-year-old PC into a sleeper. Think of it like putting a V8 into a Honda Civic, then turboing it, and adding nitrous. This is the Dell Inspiron 570. It came out around 2011. At least, that's what I think because that's the manufacturer date on the hard drive. I'm not quite sure. This was my late grandfather's old office PC, which I acquired because I'm the family tech guy that collects all the old relics. First, I want to talk about what this thing comes with. This PC comes with an AMD Athlon 2 X2 processor. That's a dual core processor with no hyper threading. This thing can't even open a web browser. It has four one gigabyte sticks of DDR3 RAM. Nice. Running this PC is a 300 watt power supply, the Raid Max AX300 XT. Pretty sure this thing was replaced, but it still doesn't have enough power for what we want to do with it. It didn't matter back in 2011 because this computer doesn't even have a graphics card in it. It runs off the built-in graphics on the CPU. And of course, Windows is installed on a very old Seagate Barracuda SATA drive. But hey, it's 7200 RPM, which is the faster hard drive speed from back in the day. Oh, it is running Windows 10, which I was very surprised with. Barely. So let's rip out all these old parts and see if we can make something fantastic. Now that my sleeper is built, I bet you're all wondering what's inside this thing. Well, it all starts with the CPU, which is none other than Intel's i5-12600K. This has 10 cores and 16 threads and boosts all the way up to 4.9 gigahertz. The motherboard is the MSI B660M mortar Wi-Fi that I recently reviewed. If you missed it, you can find it up here. It's a great board and I'm not overclocking the CPU, so there's no reason to have a Z-series motherboard. And the cool thing is the B-series motherboards allow you to enable XMP profiles on the RAM now. The RAM is 16 gigabytes of G-Skills Trident Z clocked at 3200 megahertz. For the power supply, I chose the Corsair CX650M. It's a 650 watt 80 plus bronze rated power supply, and it's a little better than the RAID Max that it came with. A decent sized power supply was needed for the GPU that I chose, which is none other than the EVGA RTX 3060 Ti XC Gaming. This can run high refresh rate 1080p or even high quality 4K gaming. I obviously didn't have a stock cooler to go with the CPU, so I decided to use the Vetru V5 that I've had in a couple videos now. It does a really good job at cooling a lot of different CPUs and uh, it looks great in the build and it happened to actually fit within the case constraint, so that was a plus. 
I also used a one terabyte Team Group MP33 NVMe SSD for storage. It's a fast drive with plenty of room for games. That is until I added Call of Duty. Speaking of Call of Duty, let's take a look at some performance benchmarks for this little sleeper. I only completed benchmarks on three games at 1080p, since that's the only monitor I have here in the studio. I pushed all the graphics to maxed and ran three runs for each test. The first game tested was Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I averaged 164.1 FPS with a 119.1% low. The second game was Red Dead Redemption 2. I got 103.9 average FPS with a 68.71% low. And the third game was Apex Legends with 176.4 and a 113.81% low. Those numbers are solid as I would expect. I mean, it is a 12600K and a RTX 3060 Ti. That's not a bad build. Of course, this build is totally pointless. There's actually a few problems with this thing that I wanna point out real quick. Temperatures would be the biggest one. In case you didn't notice, this PC has zero airflow. I mean, there's only three fans in the whole case. Well, four if you count the power supply, because I've got the CPU cooler, you have two fans on the graphics card, and then you have the one fan on the power supply itself. Once you put the side panel on and you have no intake, you kind of choke this system off. Even with the side panel off, I was getting about 72 degrees Celsius on the GPU and about the mid 60s on the CPU while gaming. As soon as I put the side panel on to do some thermal testing, it spiked the GPU above 80C almost instantly, and the CPU followed shortly after because I'm creating more heat in the case, so the CPU cooler is unable to keep up with that at that point. Another problem with the case is the inside of this thing is made of metal, and it's unpainted, uncovered, and most of the edges are not rounded, they're sharp. Only this part and this part are rounded, all of these little pass-throughs and stuff are razor sharp. So I definitely cut myself a few times. I can see why manufacturers just switch their case designs to using coded components. I mean, pre-built companies still use this design. I guess they don't expect you to want to take it apart and build a sleeper out of it. These are the biggest and most powerful components I could cram into this case. And I didn't want to hack up the case or do liquid cooling or modify it in any way. So this is the only thing I could come up with that would actually fit and work. But I did what I set out to do. I created an unassuming PC that can game at 4K and could even make a good workstation PC, providing you don't put the side panel on. Do you have any other ideas for builds on the channel here? If you do, let me know down in the comments and maybe I'll make that happen. But as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next video.